Hey friends, we've made it to the Tuscany countryside where we'll be for the next four days. I have been dreaming of an Italian countryside trip filled with incredible views, cypress trees, discovering medieval villages, and of course, tasting all of the delicious wine. Here's what we did in the heart of the Val d'Orcia, the most picturesque part of Tuscany. everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dana Perez and I'm super excited because we, Alsenia and I, yes, have just made it to Tuscany and we're gonna be here for the next four days. It's absolutely beautiful and scenic. We can't wait to go to all the wineries, check out all yes. the villages. I did a ton of research when planning this trip to Tuscany. So I'm gonna give you some travel tips along the way, kind of like how we did our trip. And we're in the middle of the Val d'Orcia, which is like the most scenic, beautiful, place in Tuscany they have like the gorgeous rolling hills basically if you think of Tuscany you think of this area it's south of Siena and we are like in the heart of it so we are like we're about a 15 minute drive from Pienza, Montalcino, Montepulciano it is just about to be noon and we're gonna head to one of the towns to start wine tasting so a little bit more about where we're staying we are staying in a Agri Turismo, which is basically a place to stay on a working farm. So we're literally like in the middle of nowhere, which I'm obsessed with. The view here is stunning. We have like a 360 view of the whole region. It's incredible. So let me share with you what the house looks like. This is our view. Incredible. There is Pienza and there was another town over here. The sunsets are incredible. We came in last night and everything is just incredible. And we are staying in this house. We have the full first part over here. So this is what our place looks like on the inside. It's a bit messy because all of our luggage, but it's a one bedroom and there's a working kitchen with the stove top, all the cooking supplies down there. And then over here we have a bathroom and we have a nice spacious bedroom. Now the mattress is comfortable, so that's a huge plus for me. Comfortable mattress is a plus. I will leave this place linked down below. It's super affordable. I think this was about like $100 a night and it's like in the perfect location with the most amazing views. I will leave this linked down below. So today we're going to head to Pienza and Maltachino for some wine tastings. Also, just to give a little idea of how many wineries there are, this is just one town, Maltachino. All the dots are a winery <laughs> and this is just one town so there are so many so call ahead they have information about like tastings if you can visit the vineyards all of that so this is our rental car i'm going to talk more about renting a car in tuscany because i did so much research and i was pretty freaked out about renting one but i'll get into more detail it's definitely a must to rent a car all right, you guys, first stop is Pienza. So this is our view as we leave our place that we're staying and it's just incredible. Look at these little baby cypress trees about to grow. It's amazing. And we are on a working farm, so they have their tractors and everything. Look at this drive, it's just so picturesque. We are gonna pay for a ticket, for a parking ticket. One hour is 170, five hours is six euros. So this is the parking lot you have to pay, but there's tons of spaces, so that's good. You don't have to really worry about parking, but you park outside the city, then you walk in. So let's pay out, we gotta pay with a credit card. Put our ticket in the windshield, we are ready to go. Oh, oh gorgeous, oh, my goodness. Continue exploring Pienza. I'm wearing this really cute jumpsuit from Everlane. It's like a linen material, perfect olive green color. It's super comfortable and cozy, especially because it's so hot out. It's like really breezy. And then I'm carrying my Low and Sons Claremont bag. This is actually a camera bag, so all my things fit in here. And just a sturdy leather bag. And then for my shoes, I'm Whoa. wearing these cute Nisolo strappy sandals. They're so comfortable and they go with every outfit. They are open. 
Maybe-ish. Love the maybe. <laughs> So here in Pienza, they are known for the pecorino cheese. So they have different flavors. Um, some are more sweet, some of them are more mature, and that sort of thing. So we can also try some. Let's go get, let's go to a cheese shop. There's cute shops, and here is a cheese shop. All of the cheese. I never like seen all these cheese wheels. But, all right, so we explored Pienza for a little bit. It was much smaller than I thought it would be. The walking center part is just a few walking streets in a medieval village. It was actually really cool. We sat down for a little sandwich and we drove about 30 minutes to Maltachino. We're going to our first wine tasting of the trip. We are at a winery called Val de Suga and the property is gorgeous. They did close for like a little siesta. We're gonna be waiting around for about like 30 minutes, which is a good tip if you wanna to go to the wineries, definitely call ahead if you can. We have a Italian SIM card so we can call and ask if they have tastings available. We did call one before this. It's like the most popular winery and they're booked for the rest of the month. So definitely call ahead because they may not be available for tastings, etc. So we have a little wine tasting gonna happen and I'm so excited to try it out. Let me show you what the grounds look like. They are so spectacular. So this is what it looks like, the winery. Like, are we living in a Tell, I think. And up here is the town of Maltachino, which is not to be confused with Maltipulciano. There's different towns and that is where the city, the city center is. For the rosso in the coolest areas, so that way we get more freshness in the rosso. Because rosso is a wine, a more approachable wine with nice freshness, nice delicate. Around. Okay. Part where we have mar, that is what we call galestro soil. So it has this dark color. It's because it's beside Montagnana, an old volcanic mountain. So it's darker respect the other one. Here today, maybe I should have shown you the whole winery but it'll take an hour to walk through so it's so we just had our first wine tasting in Maltachino. absolutely delicious if you enjoy wine and you really like the different nuances and the different grape it even goes down to like different soils yeah she was showing us three different types of soil and how different the wine tastes and of course we like the most expensive one so we got that bottle so we bought that bottle it was 55 euro mm -hmm. and then we bought the rosso which is the younger wine that was 15 euro so 15 plus 55 is how much 70 euro is it so 70. just we bought two wines yeah 70 euro that's pretty good for i think if you buy the wine the tasting is free definitely depends on where you go mm -hmm. but we bought two bottles and but now we're going to go to Another tasting, so let's go. Andiamo. Si, for white tasting, it's available. Can we come in now? Yes, you can come now. Yeah, yeah, we are open. And what is the, the is it like five wines, seven wines, how much, like? Choose which one and how many wines you would like to test. And comes at three euro each tasting. Okay, so we come now. Okay, perfect. Okay, we are open. see you soon. <laughs> okay. Ciao, Ciao. grazie. All right, we have made it to another wine tasting. This one's like in a modern building. It has a gorgeous view, so let's go inside. We are at Brunello di Cantina. Now we're doing another tasting. A minute away from the other one. Yeah, I was literally down the road. Down the road. <laughs> okay, then, then the right order are exactly from Rosso di Montalcino to Da Vinci Brunello. Well, all three are made from grapes Sangiovese. Just Rosso are not aged in oak barrel, but the still Brunello gets aging for at least two years in oak, mm -hmm. four months in a bottle it has to stay also. Sell in market after 50 years of the harvest. That's why they are really rich, strong and intense wines. Mm -hmm. Especially because the ones that you were going to try are 10 years old, mm -hmm. 2012 years. Oh wow. You will find them quite balanced, rich and round. Oh. 
So we are at Cantina di Malpicino and we are trying three different wines. They are three euros each per glass. So this is nine euros for three. And we are tasting our way through three wines, 2018 and two 2012, which I'm really excited to try out. We headed back to our place after the tasting and took in the amazing views along the way. Look at this gorgeous late afternoon view from our room. It's so beautiful. I love how you can just hear the birds chirping. It's so relaxing. And there is Pianza. That's where we were earlier today. All right, so we just got back from wine tasting. I changed into a slight linen dress, but we did two wine tastings today. We did one that was more like luxurious, I should say, it was more like on an estate. And then the other one we did was a bit more casual. We sat down on tables and we just drank the wine, three euros a glass. So they're both different experiences. They both were wonderful. And we did call ahead just to make sure that they were open and that they could take reservations just because there's siestas here. People go away. Sometimes there's only one person working and they have to do something else. So definitely just call, it just makes things easier. Or you could email maybe before you are visiting just so they know that you're coming. But really quickly, I wanna go over driving in Tuscany because I did tons of research and I was almost not even going to get a rental car but I'm so glad I did. All right, I hope you don't mind the beautiful birds chirping, but it's just so pretty out here. All right, so driving in Tuscany. So I did tons of research about if you should rent a car or if you can just travel by bus. You can do that, but I really suggest you to just rent a car and book it over a month in advance if you need automatic. I got the last automatic car in like the area of Rome. I'm not even joking with you. And... <laughs> My car rental was actually double the price of where we're staying. It got expensive because I waited and I booked it over a month in advance. So definitely, definitely pre-book your rental car if you don't know how to drive manual. I heard that the driving here is really crazy. Driving in Italy is intense. It's actually not even that bad. I don't drive in New York City. So for me driving, I don't do it every day, but it is honestly a breeze. Now I will say the Italians will ride your butt. Just know that they're gonna be right behind you. But once they get the opportunity to pass you, they will do it. But other than that, it's really not that hard. The parking signs are pretty clear in the towns because you drive up to the towns and you park outside and then you walk into the medieval historic center. So if you have any hesitation of renting a car, just rent it. I'm telling you it's not bad at all. Now, I'm not going to be driving into a major city like Florence or Rome. I'm returning the car in a small Tuscan town and then I'm taking a train to Florence after this trip. So I'm not driving in Florence or anything. So I'm just driving in the countryside and it's super easy. So definitely, definitely rent a car. We are in a small town, probably like a five minute drive from where we're staying. And we're going to a restaurant called La Terrazza. And I believe it overlooks a thermal spa. So let's check it out. Look how cool. This is so pretty. Oh my God. And we're eating here. That's right. That's what we're eating. the Rosso di Maltocino Bello de Suga, which we were there today. And we bought that bottle. And we bought that bottle, so we're gonna have it by the glass here. I love that. It's cool, this <laughs> grilled veggies and the pecorino tour. Hi, yes, looks really good. Peachy pasta, pesto spaghetti. Good morning, everyone. We are headed straight to a thermal bath. There are plenty around here. We're going to Bobney San Filippo. And I'm really excited, it looks stunning. And by the way, last night's dinner was beautiful. The venue itself was just stunning. I felt bad because there was only like one server for like literally, I would say 15, 20 tables. So the service was a bit slow, food was good, beautiful venue. And now we're headed to the thermal bath. Oh. 
we have made it to the hot springs. I believe it's the Oso Bianco. Mm. I hear, I hear the water. We found the pathway to the springs, Oso Bianco. There's definitely a smell in the air. So right away you have like this sulfur smell. Yeah, it's like sulfur. It doesn't smell like rotten eggs, but like a little bit, you know? I wonder if we're gonna smell like that. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to shower immediately after. And we are here at 8.30 in the morning. I think I hear a few people, but um, the town is not open at all. Mm -hmm. Parking is super easy. Oh, wow. my lord. Look at this. Whoa. Look how beautiful this is. Uh, this is gorgeous. There's a little stream that goes down. All right, so we found the real deal. It's a bit down and it's absolutely stunning. We've made it to the hot springs. There's like multiple levels that you can dip in. The water is pretty warm and it does great things for your skin. So we are going to relax, take some pictures because it's so beautiful and really take it in because there's only uh, four other people here. So we basically have it to ourselves. Al's already in. Al's already living over there. relaxing and really really nice i can't believe this is like this here now no admission there's no bathroom there's no concession stand it's literally just in the middle of a park i know in this area there's a lot of other natural springs there's like one like insta famous one that's always busy so this one is a bit more of like a hidden gem and you kind of have it all to yourselves versus sharing with like 40 people so i think this is a good one this is really cool. and our skin i can already feel it like we're being healed by the nature <laughs> I would also recommend bringing some like water shoes because it's a bit rocky and it's just easier to get in and out with them. I will leave them linked down below. So just leaving. Yeah, my skin has that like salty feeling like after the beach, but- Oh my God, look, show them. Oh. Oh my god, wait, Al. You have like gray hair. This is how much salt is your legs. On. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. oh my god. That's how much salt that is, is on you. This salt on your skin feels kind of like a pumice salt all over your skin. But now we're gonna head back to the room, have a little sandwich, and plan the rest of our day. Oh, little cat house. Aww. So we freshened up from our sulfur bath. Sulfur bath, yes. And we drove about, I would say like 30 minutes to Monte Pucciano. And we're going to a winery outside of the town. It's called Manvi. And we just called ahead and made our little reservation. And it was a bit of a drive here along stones. So it's definitely off the beaten path a little bit, but the view already is stunning. And yeah, yeah, it's very high up. So you can see all of the surrounding the, areas. The surrounding area, it's really beautiful. Olive trees, wineries, it's stunning. So I'll show you around and let's get to tasting some wine. Cat of the day. Very nice acidity mm. and medium bodied. Really, it goes really well. But as you can start with a rosé. Nice. We're starting off with a rosé made with 100% Merlot grapes. Yeah, uh, the grass is quite uh, intense for me, the special grass. Mm. Of course, we like the most expensive one. <laughs> Actually, we're all really good. This is a small, local, family-run, only four people run this winery. It's a very small, organic, organic and it's one of the ten of the hundred organic wineries. Yeah. really cool and then they said they, they make it down there we liked it and we bought three 
things. We got the Reserva, the Vino Nobile, and extra virgin olive oil. I love how they come in little like packets. Cases, yeah. So we just had our wine tasting. And it was incredible. It was a great small family, family owned organic vineyard. I think every time we're doing these wine tastings, we're learning a bit each way. Like we know about wine, but I, we're not experts at all. So not at all. Some wineries may become maybe a bit pretentious or a mm -hmm. little like if you don't know the wine. I would say that sometimes it can come across as authoritative and you know and it is to be respected and admired mm -hmm. for its um, prestige and history um but if you're just a person who's really interested in you know drinking italian, wine we, we, drinking wine italian us. wine culture best to come prepared and know what you're getting into and do a little research beforehand definitely or just kindly inform the people that know your level of knowledge yeah. i think that's a great way for them to set you up for a, a better, better experience tasting. exactly this was awesome we learned so much about wine making in particular mm -hmm. this tasting was 15 euros a person we had four wines and then we bought a few things because they were so good and you also get to try the bread as well as their own olive oil yeah so we had to buy that so now we're actually going to the Monte Puccino town and I guess we'll do another wine tasting but probably just explore yeah. I think this one looks a bit bigger than Pienza where we were yesterday so we're going to have a look around and we made it to Monte Puciano. That was a hike. <laughs> After our hike up from the parking lot, we arrived into Monte Puciano, which is a medieval hilltop town in Tuscany. And in the main square, there is a 14th century palazzo with a tower offering amazing views of the area. We then made it to our next wine tasting at Cantine Cantucci, which is one of the oldest and still family run wineries in Malta. So cool in here. No. Oh my God. Holy shit. Oh my God. Down further into a cellar. That is pretty wild. I see the biggest spider web up there. <laughs> they have vino nobile. Very, very nice. It is a little astringent at the back, but it's not difficult to drink with. Uh... If you want dark chocolate, if you like the combination. So this one is aged less? No, no, no. Same. Same. So what is the difference? The, the, the soil. The soil. Well, that's clay. Okay. Clay. This one is sand. Mm -hmm. Chianti 600. Uh, mm -hmm. Like in a Contucci. We have bought some more wine. This was a really fun tasting. We got two bottles, a Rosso and a Vino Nobile. And that was a real wine cellar that we walked through. It wasn't just for show, which is amazing. Everything is made right there. After our tasting, we took in the amazing views of the area. It is siesta time, so not many things are open, but the town itself is looks very old and it's beautiful. And um, parking was a bit challenging because all the spots at the top of the hill were taken. So we had to park all the way down and walk up a very steep hill. So definitely keep that in mind when you plan to come here. Either come here early, like first thing in the morning, you'll find the best parking spot. Or if you come like us mid-afternoon, the parking is basically taken for the day. Yeah, we're exploring now. Okay. We're gonna get some gelato. Yes. Copette. Pistache. Something for gelato. We then headed to a dinner nearby our hotel and the view here was spectacular and we sat outside and enjoyed this view. Three types of pecorino cheese and a deliciously looking bruschetta. Look at this view. <gasps> so beautiful. I ordered the beef cutting with saffron, which was delicious, and Al had the truffle pasta, which was the best truffle pasta he had the entire trip, so it was so good. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Bright and early, it's 8 a.m., and I've wanted to see this church 
beautiful church overlooking the hills and we're gonna see it this morning. We were gonna go last night and we had dinner at this restaurant with an amazing view. It was cloudy. Cloudy. So we're gonna go today. Capella di Violetta. Walk into the church. <laughs> we're the only ones here. We finally made it to the church after about a five minute walk. This church isn't that old, it was made in the 1800s, but because of its beauty, it's been a photographer's dream, so I wanted to scope it out and take some amazing pictures. Afterwards, we took in the amazing views, and I had my very own gladiator moment. All right, so we relaxed at the apartment, and by the way, there's a kitchen here, so we've been making our breakfast here we've been having sandwiches, yogurt, bananas, all that kind of stuff. Got some fresh cherries. So we've been saving time and eating here for the morning. But now we are going back to Montalcino for another wine tasting. But before that, we're gonna go check out the medieval town, walk around, have some gelato, and then go to a wine tasting. We are going to this winery called Franco Pincenti, and we're doing a five wine tasting, it's 30 euros a person. It's called the Sangiovese Experience. So let's check out the town. Our last full day actually. I know, it's so, so sad. Yeah, it's been so peaceful. Like we're definitely playing back here, I love it. Yeah, it's really relaxing. Very pretty, very pretty. Very beautiful square. Um, gelato and it's delicious it's so moosey like it's like air that that we explored Multicino for a little bit and I think we're realizing with these smaller medieval towns is that kind of all have the same vibe um, very similar yeah Multicino and Multipucciano are like on top of a hill mm -hmm. so if you are unfortunate and don't get an early parking spot you're gonna be walking up the hill in midday sun and so if you want to explore, explore the towns i would recommend getting there early so you can get like a better parking spot pienza was more walkable than any of them it's pretty flat you you drive up the hill and you can park at the top so i like pienza for that reason we are waiting in the car we're a bit early for our wine tasting experience okay so welcome again we are going to start with a only produce Rosso and Brunello di Montalcino. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a little wine tasting. This is so cute because we have a little view and they always usually give some breadsticks and water so you don't sip too much. <laughs> Balance it out for a full experience. 15, which is three years older, mm -hmm. it's getting into brownish color. Mm -hmm. And that's the typical color of the evolution So which ones are we trying? We're trying two Rosso di Montalcino, and now we're gonna move on to the Brunello. So Rosso means it's been aged in a barrel for one year, and then in a bottle for six months. Younger wine, you can, you can drink it with lighter body things like bruschetta, cheese, appetizers, and then Brunello's more for like meats, cheeses, heavy hair dishes, so. Luna, Luna. Oh, it likes you. We're starting a really beautiful wine tasting actually today. And we're starting from the light to the Reserva 15. And you can really taste and smell. So we're just relaxing. So we've finished most of our wine. We are just sipping on this delicious Reserva, Reserva. 15. <laughs> delicious. So we actually didn't order. We bought six bottles. They're gonna ship it to us with 65 euros to ship it. And then it's the bottle prices of the wine. And we did that because we did get some of the Reserva wines. So we're gonna ship it for later this fall. These bottles can last up to 35 years, which are controlled in the right climate. So I think we have to get a wine fridge. So I'm really excited, but we're gonna head back to the room, relax. It is very hot. Like I'm not even exaggerating, it's hot. Back to the room, cool off in the AC. And then tonight we have dinner reservations at one of the restaurants nearby us in San Quirico di Oro. Previously a Michelin star restaurant. The menu looks amazing, it's a really cute vibe. So that's where we're heading to dinner. Give me it's the restaurant. Actually, 
Actually, yes, I can. This device is cool. It has the factory that produces. Mm -hmm. Truffles. 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 Looks really pretty too. Is that the tartare? Good morning everyone. It is our time to say goodbye to Tuscany countryside. Last night's dinner was delicious. The steak was incredible. It had toppings of truffle. Basically, if we saw a truffle on the menu, we ordered it. And we're just packing up our thing, saying goodbye to this amazing view. And we are headed to Florence. So if you want to check out what we do in Florence, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see what we get up to. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about Tuscany. Leave them down below and I will see you guys in Florence. Bye.